morning, everyone. I am Jonathan Little. Had a fun email this morning from someone who basically said, I've been studying up to play poker. I've been working hard on my game. I'm from America. I went to somewhere in Europe. I wanted to play, and it turns out I can't play. Oh, let's get my microphone in the right spot. There we go. And um, that's a heck of a bummer, right? To go on a trip, think you're going to get to play poker, and then you just can't. Well, what did this person do wrong? They did not understand how online poker works for Americans, and they assumed the way it works in America is the way it works for everyone else in the world. Now, I'm probably going to make a more in-depth video on this at some point, but I figured I'd give you all some tips because I'm tired of getting emails saying something to the effect of, which site should I play on? I'm in America. And listen, first things first, when you can play on a licensed and regulated site, that is ideal. So um, I'm not 100% up on which sites poker is legal in, but I'm pretty sure it's Nevada, New Jersey, and Delaware at the moment. That very likely could change, right? Probably will change. So knowing that, if you can play on those sites, that is almost certainly better. Okay? Good. Now that we know that. Full disclosure, by the way, I play on none of these sites. You may ask why. Why don't you play on these sites? Few issues. Um, I'm, I, don't, I don't live in Nevada, New Jersey, or Delaware. And if you are in America, by the way, and you travel to Nevada, New Jersey, or Delaware, you can play on those sites. You do not have to be a resident. Um, but we will get there, okay? We get to how it works in the other countries. Um, now the unregulated sites. First off, some of these do not operate in all states. Very often, Nevada, New Jersey, and Delaware, these unregulated ones do not operate because they have been expressly forbidden from operating there. And they're not trying to go to prison. You know, they're kind of trying to go to prison because they are operating shadily. But um, they're not actively trying to go to prison. So in a lot of states, you cannot play on some of these sites. Um... But there are only three sites within America that I would even consider playing on because these are the only three that actually have a large player pool. In order for there to be liquidity in a site, for, there to be, for you to be able to consistently cash out, um, essentially, and also so, so that there are big games, which you know, is what I'm trying to, to do, you need a lot of players on the site. There are only three. Ignition, America's Card Room, and Global Poker, okay? I would keep a total of $100 out of my entire net worth on these sites. That is how confident I am in them. Um, I, I'm not confident in them at all. If you look at the history of poker sites in America, every single one of them has failed if they've had any sort of time to survive. Besides exactly one. Which one is that? Well, you may have known of it in the past as Bodog. Then that got shut down. They changed to Bovada. That got shut down. They changed to Ignition. Ignition is the only one that has actively skirted the laws for a long time. So, knowing that, if you had to put money on a site, would you rather put your money on a site that is somewhat new, that has not been thoroughly tested by the regulations, or would you rather put your money on the one that has been tested? So... Listen, if I had to play in America, if I wanted to play poker in America, I would, put my, I would play on Ignition. I would also, when I do play on these sites that accept Americans, I would keep almost no money in there. I would keep something like one buy-in or two buy-ins. And yes, I understand that's going to cause annoyances because you're going to bust a two buy-in bankroll all the time. But that will ensure you never get screwed by the site closing down. I think what a lot of people do not understand is that most of these sites that have operated in America, essentially all of them, have closed, and a large chunk of them have not paid back players. Or if they did, it took forever. Okay? And you don't need that in your life. So understand, any money you put into these unregulated, unlicensed poker sites that are operating shadily within America, you're alive to have it stolen from you. Some people say, are these sites actually shady? Are they cheating me? No, they're not cheating you. They just may close and keep your money. Right? Clinton does the right thing. You withdraw big wins and keep a small percentage of your bankroll on ignition. And I don't even think it's a percentage of your bankroll is, is the question. I think it's more of a question of how much do you need to actually play on the site, right? 
Like, let's say you have a million dollars. You don't want to keep 5% of your money in ignition. That would be dumb. Like, just as dumb as it could be. You don't need 50K on a site whenever the biggest games they have are $500 or $1,000. And again, I actually don't know um, what size games these sites have because I'm not playing on them. But I do know these are the three that I've heard that actually have decent games. Um, I have played on all three of these sites in the past. I currently do not now. Don't even know my login information. <laughs> all right, next, America's Card Room. They currently have some of the bigger tournaments. Um, and America's Card Room... Somehow, they actually have a decent amount of support from some American players. I would not be putting my money on there or my name on there. I believe they're probably going to go the way of Lock Poker. Eric says that Lock Poker still owes you a thousand. No, Lock Poker doesn't owe you anything because you think that the money you put in there was your money. You have to understand how essentially all gambling sites view your deposits. They view that as their money. You are making a purchase. A purchase. When you make a purchase, that money is theirs. It's not yours, it's theirs. It's their goal to try to keep it. So how do they keep it? Well, first off, they can rake you. Second, they cannot pay you. So if they can't rake you, then, you know, Lock Poker decides, no, we're just not going to pay them. Actually, what probably happened with most of these sites that, that went down, by the way, is they were spending so much on marketing, presuming they're going to get that much and more from Rake. So you deposit your thousand bucks. They spend that thousand dollars on marketing. They presume you're going to lose to the Rake trap. Maybe they spend like eight hundred of it on marketing, and um, and then they keep two hundred to cash out people. And sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. Lock Poker was a great example of a site that had a lot of traction. Everybody thought that was going to be the next big poker site in America. Lots of pros hopped on board. They asked me to hop on board. I said. Oh, no, I've seen this train wreck before. And um, we didn't get caught in the crash that time. But it's very important to understand what you're signing up for. Whenever you sign up for an unregulated site, you are putting your money in knowing that that money is gone. And some portion of the time, you'll get it back. Usually, you will get it back. But sometimes you won't. When poker was legal, did you play live? Did you, I mean, I play, I play online poker now still today. We're going to talk about that moving forward. Um, I didn't stop playing online poker just because it's not legal in America, right? You figure out ways to still play if you actually are a professional and you care. All right, next, um, Global Poker. This is the newest of the three. Ignition is the oldest. ACR is the second oldest. Global Poker is the third oldest. Um, global Poker... They have some funny method where you don't actually play with dollars. You play with, like, coins, and you pay, you buy coins using PayPal money, but then they can somehow cash out the coins using PayPal money. I'm sure there's some convoluted law they're trying to get around using this method. I don't know if it's going to succeed or not. Um, but anyway, they're the newest. I don't know anything about it. I have played on it some in the past. Game seems soft. Listen, the fun thing about all these sites are that they're all very soft. You may ask, why are they all very soft? Because legitimate pros don't want to keep good money on there because they've seen this train wreck before, right? Everyone who's all gung-ho about these new sites thinking these are going to be the next big thing, you're delusional. Sure, they may become the next big thing, but if you know history, history repeats itself. It really does. And all these sites that are trying to skirt the law get in a lot of trouble. Wait for them to get big enough, and they'll get in trouble just like all of the other sites did, right? So Ninja says it's some sweepstakes convoluted law. Yeah, and again, you can't get around the convoluted laws by, by being shady. Seems very, very shady to me. I would not put money on there. Again, if I had to tell you where to put your money, it would be Ignition. And to be fair, I do tell all of my students in America, put $50 in an online site. Put $50 there and use that to play tiny stakes games, right? When you play tiny stakes games... You're still going to get experience, right? You're playing against people who care, who are playing for real, and you have almost no money at risk. It's like whenever you go to the movie, right? When you go to the movie, um, you're not expecting to get that money back. That money's long gone, right? And that's okay. Whenever you put $50 in these sites, realize it's probably gone, and that's okay. You're paying for the experience of playing against players for real. And if you are taking live poker seriously, you're playing live poker for $200 minimum buy-in, and um, 
it's, it's like chump change, right? If you're buying in for $50, which should last you, you know, forever if you're good, it's, it's like chump, it just doesn't even count, right? It's, it's play money, but you're getting real experience. And that is how I suggest all Americans treat online poker today. Um, there are a few other sites worth mentioning. Uh, there's this new thing, PPP Poker. It's not actually new. There are these Chinese apps that you can download. And with these Chinese apps, you can essentially find an agent who is a human. The humans then give you coins or play dollars or something like that on this site. And then you play on an app on your phone. I have experimented with these as well. I've experimented with most things. Most good professionals experiment with things. Um... They have a very small player pool on these sites. And um, it turns out a lot of people are stiffing people. Who would have thought when you're dealing with agents, just like whenever you are dealing with a bookie, the bookie will sometimes stiff you. That should be obvious. Clearly, that is going to happen. So definitely do not play on these apps. I understand they're super convenient because you can play on your phone. But um, only do that if you really don't care about your money. Is there any value in streaming not being known? You would think you wouldn't get any return from it. Dean Nelson, what is the purpose? Ask yourself, what is the purpose? Currently, Party Poker signing any person, it seems, who has more than 100 followers. So um, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe not for Party Poker, but for the next wave, whoever they pick up. I kind of have this theory that... Um, actually, I don't have a theory. I know it's true for me, at least. That the Twitch audience does not care about getting better at poker. So, that's not very beneficial for me. The YouTube audience very much does care about getting better at poker. So whenever I stream on Twitch, yes, people watch, but no one signs up for training sites. No one buys things. Why? Because they play for play money or tiny, tiny stakes, and also they are there to watch free entertainment. People who want marginal entertainment for free often don't care about bettering their lives. So it's not my audience, and that's cool. I don't have a problem with that. Um, so you find your audience, right? I think a lot of the poker sites are going to find that people who stream on Twitch are far less valuable than they think because the eyeballs that are watching are very often eyeballs of people who aren't actually that interested in getting in there and playing, but more so want to be entertained. Now, maybe the sites have great stats knowing that all these people are signing up, I don't know if that's true or not. My idea, my, my thoughts are that poker stars probably thought first, you know what, we have lots of these young eyeballs, these young eyeballs who are 17, 18, 19 are going to grow up, they're going to sign up for our site, and they're going to come play. Stars did that for a few years. They, um, they did it for a few years. They probably saw, you know what, we're not converting any of these people. Why are you not converting them? Because they're not interested in actually playing. They're only interested in consuming. And um, party will probably figure that out, too. All right. Let's see. Watching poker is great whenever it's a train wreck. You're right. KK Pep is saying there are two PPPs. One is legit. One is play money. Listen. KK Pep, if any site accepts your money in America and they are not licensed and regulated by the United States government, they are very live to steal your money. There are actually many sites that operate in America. Um, you can do a quick Google search and find. There's like 40 of them. And most of the, I only mentioned the big three because those are the ones that actually have player pools. The other ones are very, very small. Whenever they have a small player pool, you're, like, you're just never getting cashed out. Um, and I mentioned PvP poker because that is something that se people seem to be hopping on the bandwagon because it's so easy to play on your phone. But I know a few people personally who have been stiffed already. And, um, it's coming. Just be patient. Uh, what about GG poker? That is not legal in America as far as I know. I do know some Americans play using VPNs. I believe on some sites, I'm not going to name names, they're cool with that. Some sites are not cool with that. The major sites are not cool with that. Don't try to play on a VPN on the major sites. They will ban you. Everyone knows this. Don't be a fish. <clears throat> All right, let's see. What's next? Oh, Americans now who want to travel to play. Let's say you decide, all right, I'm going to take a trip to Canada or Hungary or something like that to play. I'm not going to get set up. I'm just going to travel there and play like I do in Nevada. 
you're going to be sorely disappointed. You have to go and become a resident of a country in order to play online poker from that country on the major sites like Party Poker, Poker Stars, etc. So, how do you do that? Well, there's a company I use called Poker Refugees. They've been around for quite a while, ever since Black Friday happened. They have helped me relocate twice. Um, basically, you need to get a rent, a lease. So you have to get a lease somewhere. At a, you need to rent an apartment. And then you need to have a few utility bills in your name. Sometimes a hassle. People like Poker Refugees can do most of the legwork for you. All you have to do is sign the paperwork and pay your bills. Um, it does cost a little bit of money. A few thousand dollars. It's going to cost you a few thousand dollars if you're an American to go get set up in those other countries. And you can only play when you are in a place that allows you to play on those sites. Now, say you get set up in Canada and you go to Europe. If you are in one of the, the countries in Europe that allow you to play on the global market, you can. If you go to France, Italy, or um, Spain, as far as I know, they have their own sites at the moment. They're trying to change it around. Um, but they have their own sites within those countries. So if you go to Italy, let's say, you can't actually play on Poker Stars there because you're set up in Canada. You have to be set up in Italy. And when you're in Italy, you can only play on the Italian site, which is silly because Italy is a small country. So um, currently I am relo I've relocated to Hungary, Budapest, and they have pretty loose gambling laws there. I don't expect that place to get shut down anytime soon. Canada has rather strict gambling laws now. Like, I don't think you can even deposit with Skrill or Net Teller or some of those. And you want to make sure you can get money. You want to make sure you can move your money around easily. You do need to get yourself set up with a Skrill and a Net Teller account. You can do that if you relocate to those countries. Poker Refugees, again, can help you out. Um, so that's it. I would essentially say that whenever you are traveling, make sure you understand the rules. When you're traveling from... Anywhere to play on the American sites, that is fine. When you're traveling from America to play on the other sites, that's not fine. If you're going to relocate using PokerRefugees.com, do not post links to shady sites on my account, please, KKPAP. Please delete that immediately. Um, if you are going to relocate to places to play, make sure you understand exactly what you're signing up for. Some people think they can sign up for... Um, uh, a Hungarian relocation, and then they try to play from America. You cannot do that. You cannot play on the sites that are not legal in America from America. You cannot do this. Do not think you can. Um, KK Pep seems to think that they're, the PPP poker, there are two different ones. You have to understand, just because they both have the same name does not mean it's the same thing. The, the site people are referring to is PPP poker. It is on your phone. It is an application. If that's what you're referring to, then it is shady. If they have a free version, it's shady. If they are trying to operate within America and try to get you to pay money. That's like saying the free version of ACR is fine, but the, the, non, the paid version is not fine. Right? That's, that's ridiculous, right? The purpose of the free version is to drive you to the paid version. Anyway, we're not going to talk about random sites. I guess we might as well talk about things like um, Club WPT or um, there was something called Spade Club in the past. I don't know if it still exists. Uh, those sites essentially allow you to pay using um, – that you pay each month. You pay something like 20 bucks a month, and then you have the opportunity to win um, – you have the opportunity to win seats to major events. So basically, they're legal free rolls, right? Where essentially you're paying some amount of money each month, and if you're the big winner on the site in the month, to some extent, you have to win some tournaments, you get a seat to a tournament. I think these are generally not good for your progression as a poker player. People who play there treat them as if they are play money, and that is not a good strategy. Also, you're paying a $20 buy-in tournament for the whole month. You're not playing very big stakes if you play 100 games. I mean, what is that, two-cent buy-in? You really want to spend your time playing two-cent buy-in tournaments? Probably not, right? Bovada seems laggy. Is it run from the United States? No, most of these sites are not run from the United States. Most of these sites are actually regulated, quote-unquote regulated, in very loose markets, and they're often run from loose places. 
There are also Bitcoin sites. I know America's Card Room takes Bitcoin. That's how they are currently getting around a lot of the issues. There's apparently a site called Nitrogen Poker, which I've heard of as well. <clears throat> Again, if they're operating in America, be careful. <clears throat> Seals with Clubs was operating within America for a while. They're not. Still exists, but they're not. So you have to be smart about this. D. William makes a, a very bad assumption. If you play on a VPN, they can't know where you are. That's absolutely false. You ever tried to play on Poker Stars or Party Poker using a VPN? Look up Gordon Bio, Poker Stars. See what happens when you try to play on a VPN from America. You have to understand, these sites are very sophisticated. It is in their best interest to know that you are operating legally because they really want to follow the rules because they want to be legalized within America. When you play on a VPN, I know you think it's private, but it's not. Even the good ones are not. Trust me. Trust me on this. If you want to get really advanced, there are ways in theory to run a router from America through other countries. But again, they can spot it, right? There are ways for them to spot it. These houses get shut down. People pay money to other people to run games from their houses from countries where the games are legal. And... Just not worth it. Don't be a fish. There's a saying, don't um, poo where you eat. And it's very important to understand that if you are a high stakes poker player, where you eat is party poker and poker stars. So don't poo there. That would be really, really short-sighted and dumb. Okay? Don't be dumb. Do I do these sessions regularly? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 a.m. How long before poker is completely legal, you think? In America? Or the whole world? Probably never in the whole world. In America, I don't know, 30 years, give or take? 30 years seems like a good number. You don't understand Americans. Well, no, you have to understand that um, there are these things called lobbying groups within America where people essentially pay lots and lots and lots of money to ensure that their laws and their ideals become the, the law of the country. Lobbying groups exist. William says, it can be done. I'm just saying that it can be done. Again, obviously it can be done, and then you may get caught. What are my thoughts on World Series of Poker.com? Completely legal in the countries where it is legal, or the states where it is legal. Uh, let's see. Everyone's trying to say the government's trying to steal all of our rights. The government's not trying to steal your rights. People in the government are trying to steal your rights. And often it's not even people in the government. Understand who makes the laws. It is not the government most of the time. It is the lobbying groups. So, how do you stop a lobbying group that has infinite money? That's the real question. I know there was a few, there either are or there were a few poker lobbying groups, and they did a very poor job. And I, how deep do we want to go on this? I think they were essentially run by people who didn't, the people who cared a lot, but people who were not actually competent. It's very important to make sure you hire competent people if you're going to spend tons of money to try to fix a problem. And... I don't think they did that for poker. I know a few people who were involved with these poker lobbying groups, and they were far from competent. They would, they would do things to like actively tear down the poker community, and it was just, it was just terrible. It was legitimately terrible. All right. Let's see. You stopped to ask a question about my site. Your biggest error seems to come on the flop. Can you recommend your best reward to study that? Um. How to think about hand ranges is probably a good one for you. Also, if you're only doing the quizzes, go do the homework challenges. The homework challenges will teach you how to play way better on the flop. What's my spirit animal? Oh, which one is it? Which one is it? It's this one right here. This is a lion unicorn. Rawr, rawr. The lion unicorn is a spirit animal. Can we sit it right here? Let's see. I think we can do it. All right. 
Volume is a bit low. Can you do anything about it? Yeah, there's a little uh, setting on your computer to turn up the volume. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. A lot of people need to hear this. A lot of people do. I understand it's not for everyone, but it is very important to make sure that you understand what's going on. Who is Ben CB? Ben CB is a good online player. He has very good results. All right, let's see. Very disappointing to see so much support for ACR for members of the community. Mike, I think you are missing something. You're missing the reason people are supporting ACR. It's because they have good games. Their site is marginally stable. It goes down like every two days, but it's marginally stable. But um, they're also getting paid. Poker players in America have not had a paycheck for a long, long time. And you have to understand, a lot of the people who are supporting them have a difficult time getting money. ACR decides to throw them a bone, they take the bone. It is what it is. And you know, it's actually a tough thing because listen, I mean, I understand I'm at a point in my life where I don't have to take the bone. I mean, I was considering getting a deal from Lock Poker a long time ago, even when I thought Lock Poker may be a little bit shady, just because they're operating in America, right? If they're operating in America, they are shady, okay? And back then, they, were, they looked completely legit. They had many, many sponsor pros. I knew the sponsor pros were getting paid. They were able to cash out. Everybody was able to cash out. There was no problems, but they were operating in America. That's all I really needed to know. And I decided not to take a good deal. A good, like a legitimate deal. Like they have many thousands of dollars a month just to play on the site and vouch for the site. But we've seen this in the past. These sites have not stood the test of time, and I don't want to be involved with something that very easily could be shaped. Jay Nandez, poker in the chat. Good morning, good morning. Hope you're having a great day. Anyway, at the moment, ACR looks pretty legit. They are even doing their cash ins and outs in a rather legit way using Bitcoins, et cetera, et cetera. But... We've seen this story, right? We've seen this story. Is there an affiliate program for PokerCoaching.com? Not at the moment. Maybe in the future, though. You're saying my volume is lower than normal. Well, we're not going to fix the lower volume today. It is what it is. So if you are an American and you want to get experience playing online, remember, we're not trying to get rich play playing online. We're just trying to get experience. What you should do is put $50 on one of these sites, understanding that money is perhaps just gone. And if the money is perhaps just gone, that's okay. We are going to play to get experience because you have to understand, it's rather difficult to get rich from online poker today anyway, unless you're devoting your life to it. I know a lot of you who are asking me which site to play on are not hardcore serious poker players who are going to be playing 80 hours a week, right? You're going to be playing... 10 hours a week. And if your goal is to just play to get some experience so you can go play your live game, which is for much, much more money against way softer opponents, then put a tiny bit of money on one of the sites. I would suggest Ignition because those are the ones, that's the site that's paid out for the longest. And they have decent games and then go from there. Um, some people are asking, do we care about these anonymous games? Are we worried about people cheating us? Are we worried about the site cheating us? Are we worried about not being able to use a heads up display, et cetera, et cetera? I think the anonymous games are probably good for the game in general because you have to ask, what skill does a good player have? Okay? What skill does a good player have? Good players are going to be able to make better use of whatever information they are given. So, what information can you take away? First things first, you take away the heads up display. That's obvious. Um, heads up displays are really good for pros and really not good for non pros. So take away their heads up display. Next, um, make the games turbo y. Make the games a little bit faster, right? That takes away their skill edge. You can also take away their reads on their opponents, right? Take away those too. You do that by getting rid of the names. And you'll see if you do all of this, what ends up happening is the pro's skill level decreases. Their ROI goes down. And remember how we talked about whenever you deposit money onto a poker site, how do they view it? It is a purchase. You are purchasing money from them. 
They think that money is essentially all theirs. It's just their goal to keep it. They do that by making sure no one cashes out. Now, again, they can do that by just stealing your money, but they don't want to steal your money. Then they're killing the golden goose. You don't want to kill a golden goose, do you? No, no. You want to get all the golden eggs you possibly can. Oh, hi, James. Come in, come in. Let's see what we have. Show everybody. Uh, what do you have? Taxi. You have a taxi? Yes. We're talking about online poker. What color is the taxi? Blue. No, it's not blue. It's golden. You see Daddy over there? Um, anyway. Yeah, you see you. And you see more? Yeah. What do you think about golden gooses? Daddy. Do you like golden gooses? Yes. Golden gooses are delicious to eat, but you don't want to eat it. You just want to eat the eggs. Do you like eggs? Yeah. How do you like your eggs? Do you like them scrambled or in an omelet? You like omelet? Huh? Huh? Do you have any clue what I'm talking about? You're a good boy. All right, I have to go finish talking about how online sites may be shady. Okay, bye. I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Good luck. See you. Bye. Good luck, see you. Um, okay. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, so the Sykes, they view their money as a purchase. They want to keep it all in a way that makes you not unhappy. They do that by having high rake, running turbo tournaments, running bounty tournaments, running um, games like spin and goes, right? Running games where the edge of the good player is very, very, very low. And um, at the same time, that is really good for the recreational player because recreational players who are going to lose are going to lose slower. Now, everyone's going to lose, which is great because if everyone's losing, no one cashes out, right? So in theory, especially if you are a recreational player, which again, I know most of you are, you're not out there grinding at 80 hours a week, then... You want, you want games where you're not just going to get demolished. Ignition not only pays out very well, Neil, again, I don't care if it pays out or not. I like that it pays out or not, but they're probably going to stop in, at some point. You can start with a very small amount of money and grind it up. Well, yeah, you can, you can do that in all, in, on pretty much all sites. If you start with a small amount of money, you can grind it up. These sites urge you to use Bitcoin to cash out. Max checks are three thousand dollars. What are what are my thoughts on that? I mean, there are Bitcoin groups where you can easily trade U.S. dollars for cash. That's that should not be a problem if you are a. Um, listen, I think a lot of people who have these questions aren't doing a whole lot of thinking for themselves. It is not hard. To, I mean, I'm in two crypto groups, and I don't even deal with crypto. I am in two crypto groups where I can easily trade cryptocurrencies for U.S. dollars. Okay. And these are all groups where everyone has to be vouched for. I have never had an issue the few times I have had to deal with it. And if you are looking around and active in the community, it's fine because the crypto is essentially as good as cash. Now, don't be a fish. Don't keep your old bank on crypto. A few people have done that. You want to come back in? You want to be a star again? Come back, come back. James said he wants to be the star again. Come here. Come here. Here, what's this? What's this? Do you like this? It's a lion unicorn. Do you like it? Did you make a poop? You made a poop and came in my small office? James, that's terrible. Oh, that's terrible. Now it smells like poop in my office. Are you on your I am on my video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I love you. Have fun with your taxi. No, no, no. Go on. I'm in the middle of a show. You gotta go. You gotta go. It stinks in here now. It stinks in here now. No, no. I need cover. All right. What were we talking about? Oh, don't keep all of your money in any sort of um, very highly volatile assets. That's ridiculous, no. right? Did you just lose your buy-in? He dropped his buy-in on the floor of his diaper. <laughs> James is just right down here. Can you stand up? Can you stand up? Stand up. No? He's driving his taxi around. Um, listen, so many people have been ruined by the fact that 
They started playing poker two or three years ago, and then now they decided to keep all their money in crypto because they were winning and they were cashing out, and all that money has gotten sliced in a fourth or something like that. You either have to stay or go because the water outside is loud. What do you want to do? You want to stay? You stay. Okay. All right. Everybody get your um, clothespin for your nose. James is in here. We'll shut the door. Anyone who tells you to keep all your money in crypto is a fish. And anyone who does keep all their money in crypto is a fish. Uh-oh, the door's shut. Yeah. Can you come be on the show if you're going to be on the show? Either, either do it or don't do it. What did you do? I poo-pooed. You poo-pooed? Yes. That's okay. It's a natural function. I told you this morning, you're going to poop two or three times every day for your rest of your life. Maybe only one if you're lucky. Can you say hello to everyone? Hello. Can you, can you blow a kiss? Hello, Jake. Oh, you see yourself over there? Can you blow a kiss? Sorry to everyone who's listening to this on a podcast, an audio podcast. Mr. James is indeed here. He is here, live in the flesh, with his toy taxi. He's waving it around. James, all your fans are waving back to you, too. Can you wave? Oh, you're so sweet. All right, can you let Mommy go change your diaper? Okay. We'll come back. We'll come back. Okay. Bye. See you. You'll come back. All right. Which side is best for low rate? I don't know. Look around. I mean, listen, again, a lot of these questions are that you all are giving me, like, is it bad that they give me my money in cryptocurrency? I mean, like, no. I mean, yes, I'd not ideally rather get cash, but get in a group and trade your crypto for dollars. Do not keep all your money in crypto, just like you would not keep all of your money in oil or gold or one stock, right? That'd be really, really dumb. The problem, though, is this is the problem a lot of you are going to have is that you all are kind of new to poker. A lot of people who have been here, I'm just going to guess. We're going to have 8,000 views on this video by the, end of, by the end of tomorrow. And I would guess probably four to 5,000 of you got into poker within the last two years. And you're new. That's what it amounts to. Everyone likes to think that they are well integrated into the game, into the society, and that they know a lot. But at the end of the day, you do not have a lot of experience. You have not watched countless American sites come in, get money, take money, fail, move forward. Right? This is like the fifth iteration since I've been playing poker. And uh, first iteration, ooh, they got me. I had money stuck on Netflix, or Netflix, huh? Net Teller. I had money stuck on Full Tilt. I had money stuck on Poker Stars. And that one wasn't even the first iteration. I, I was too stupid when I got in to, to realize that you know what, this has already happened once before, or many times before. Um, there was a site, Planet Poker, the first first poker site that ever popped up as far as I know. Planet Poker didn't have any money whenever they got closed up. First one. We should have known from the very first instance. Yet, a lot of you probably never even heard that name, right? And that's because you're new. And to be fair, I would bet if you polled people in a poker room Three out of a hundred would know what Planet Poker is, and I would bet I would guess that probably fifteen out of a hundred would have even known about things like um, Absolute Poker, right? Not a whole lot. And listen, you need to study history to know the future. Obviously, you don't want to dwell on the past, and you don't want to be deathly afraid of doing anything going forward. But you need to look at what has happened in the past and use that to indicate what is likely to happen in the future. And so far, poker has done a very, very nice repeat of itself over and over and over and over and over again. Sites come into America or any unregulated place. They operate for a while. They get a bunch of deposits. They pack it up. They go home. Everyone's sad and angry. They can't understand how it happened. It happens over and over and over again. I remember uh, one of my friends had a lot of money on cake poker. You guys remember cake poker? 
Cake Poker, I think you ended up selling to some other site, but then that site would only cash you out like 500 bucks a month or something like this. And um, the guy who I knew was just like a small stakes player. He played one two no limit on there. And he ended up having, I don't know, 10K on it. Just never, he kept trying to cash out, but they would never cash him out. They're like, yeah, cash out takes six months. Listen, if it takes six months to get your cash out, that site is, site is shady. Get your money off of there ASAP and move forward with your life. What happened to Paradise Poker? I don't know. I don't know of hearing any bad things about Paradise Poker, so they probably integrated to some um, other site, most likely. But I, I actually don't know. Are these things Ponzi schemes? Some are, some aren't. Some are, some aren't. All right, I don't have anything else to say about this. Be smart, don't be a fish. That's really what it amounts to. And don't listen to what everyone tells you. So many people are gonna tell you. Like if you look at Instagram today, you go and you look at an Instagram story, there are these people who seem to be legitimate humans promoting shady poker sites. And either that means they are fooled or they are trying to get you. Either way, if they are fooled, you probably shouldn't be taking information from them and doing what they say. And if they are trying to get the best of you, well, then you probably shouldn't be doing what they're trying to say, right? Defunct takes the very normal stance of nitrogen poker only takes an hour or two to cash out. Therefore, it must be great. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Everyone thinks that because things are functioning well at the moment, that things must be going well. And... I mean, look, at the end of the day, it's really not all that hard to run a poker site in a manner that doesn't leave you bankrupt. The problem is almost none of the sites do that. They decide that all the money that gets deposited is there, is theirs. Why don't they just assume the rake money is theirs? That'd be smart, right? Just assume the money you raked is yours. If you did that, then um, you'd probably be okay. Problem is, is they, they don't do that. Those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Yep, and I made this talk for all of you, and I would bet, gosh, I don't know, 90% of you are going to make the, they're just going to ignore me and make the same problems that I'm saying. Hopefully I'm wrong, right? I mean, listen, nothing would make me happier than to see sites that are doing good work succeed. The problem, though, is that the sites that are currently operating in America are completely going against uh, the U.S. government, and that's not too wise. Where can you get these shirts? These are not quite made yet. We're in the process of getting something like this made. This shirt was expensive. This costs like $80. It's hard to give, hard to give away or sell $80 shirts. But um, we're in the process of making affordable ones and that will ideally be nice. Yeah, the idea of using a webcam uh, to make a site. Um, yeah, so I'm actually involved with a site that operates in Brazil that had a idea for that. And um, I don't think that ever ended up happening just because everyone has to have a webcam and if you, you just like don't have to have one, like what if you just don't have a webcam? Either you can't play or, or what? You just don't get to play? Seems a little bit rough, especially in um, upcoming places like, like Brazil where everyone doesn't have a sweet computer. Um, but anyway, yeah. Don't be a fish needs to be on the shirt. I agree. That's a good, that's a good one. I'm generally not a fan of sayings on a shirt, but um, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, if you don't have a webcam, then you can't play. The problem is if you're operating somewhere where everyone doesn't have a webcam, then you're just turning off a lot of the people. Can I explain what really happened at Full Tilt? Um, long story short, they had a lot of money coming in. They spent all that money and then some. Also, they were giving out loans unnecessarily. Um, also, they bought a bank to do shady transactions within America, which is expressly illegal. Also, when people try to deposit money, they would credit their account without actually getting the money. And that's it. What are my thoughts on sites that operate in America, like World Series of Poker and 88? They're perfectly fine. They're not gonna steal your money. If they do, everyone working there will go to jail, which they don't want to do that. Again. 
Let's see. You love the shirt. Poker coaching has increased your hourly rate by two big blinds per hour. Well, good job. I don't know what a big blind is for you. Even if it's a dollar, it's a lot of money extra per month. Any thoughts on global poker? We already talked about global poker chronicles. I don't know why you're so late. I said that is one of the ones I would definitely not put my money on. Why? Because they're new and they are clearly operating using very likely convoluted laws. And you don't want to operate using convoluted laws. Oh, wow. Mike's playing 2 5. Can you imagine making an extra $10 an hour just because you signed up to a $40 a month site? You have to play a whopping four hours per month to break even. I bet you play more than four hours per month. What are my thoughts on these types of heaters? Julio, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I had one of these heaters. I've been very fortunate to have these heaters, or one of these heaters in the past. Um, back in the day, they did not have $100,000 buy-in tournaments. $10,000 was roughly as big as they got. And I won, I think it was $2.5 million in about a year and a half, which was 250 buy-ins. It's a pretty good win rate. I was probably only in for like 40 buy-ins. So we had a nice 500% ROI for about a year and a half. I should have just quit and packed it up. <laughs> Um, I won every hand I played for a year and a half. I won every big hand I played for a year and a half. I was playing better than most people. My natural strategy was very... It exploited the opponents very, very well. People folded too much, and I was just a little bit over-aggressive. So, what are my thoughts on these heaters? They happen. If you play enough, they happen. There are maybe 100 very good pros each year who play a lot, who are all live to go on a heater. And one or two of them will go on a heater. I mean, like, look at Justin Bonomo, right? He's been around as long as I have, and he did not have any gigantic scores. But then he just broke out over the last few years. What happened? Did he get a lot better? Like, no, he just started winning his hands. You really only play, like, 10 or 20 big hands each year, and if you win 20... If you win, like, 80% of your big hands, you're going to win all the money. Have I written anything on five betting win deep? Uh, you probably shouldn't be doing it against most people. Same thing applies to four betting, three betting, etc. It just ranges get stronger. You say global is your only option. No, you should play on Ignition if you can. Next would be America's Card Room. Next would be Global Poker. But again, only play for experience. How safe is it to keep an account at a casino's cage? I've never had a problem using um, front money accounts. One time I didn't know I had front money at Bellagio. They called me like two years after apparently I had accessed it last, and they said, hey, you know you have $10,000 here. Would you like to collect it? Like, oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll be there in a week or two. <laughs> and I've got $10,000. So that was fun. But um, I have never had a problem with a front money account. That's where basically your just money's on a tally at the casino. Obviously, make sure you keep all the receipts. Make sure the casino's legit. Don't do it at a, a crappy casino. Do it at like, Bellagio or somewhere that you know is not going to go broke. What you think is not going to go broke. <laughs> it, do you all remember the period where they thought the casinos on Vegas were in Vegas were going to close? Like, there was... The idea that Venetian was going to just be closed on Saturday and later because everybody was out of money. And um, this, this really happened. This was maybe, I don't know, eight or ten years ago. I remember thinking, oh my god, I have to get my money out of Bellagio because Bellagio might go broke. <laughs> and uh, that would have been terrible. And I did get all my money out of Bellagio. Fortunately, fortunately it didn't go broke. You have 10% ROI in sit and goes. Is that good? No, 10% ROI in sit and goes is great. Just play a ton of them. Play 5,000 of them a month and you will get rich. This, these replays are always available on YouTube, youtube.com slash float the turn. What is front money? It's a, a form of an account where basically you front the money. I go, I give the casino some money, and they hold on to it. And then when I go to the cage, I say, hey, give me my money. They give me your money. You go play with it. You go back to the cage. You put it back in. And that way, you never have to deal with taking cash to the casino or taking cash from the casino. They can wire it out for you. Typically, when you go to play a major poker tournament, you wire in money. They hold it for you at the cage in an account, and you go to the cage, you just get out whatever you need. He also says, somewhere said that uh, the casino is going to charge him for holding his money monthly. Well, that's just silly. They should be happy to hold your money, right? Because you know they invest it all, and they make their 2 or 3% a year for free. You play trumpet and poker. Do I still play trumpet? I did play trumpet. I can still play a trumpet. Not very good, though. Let 
Mr. Thomas was outside, but he, Amy said, no, no, Mr. Thomas. It's okay, it's okay. Mr. Thomas is just looking and wondering what's going on. You're barely winning and breaking even. Do you think the big money is now just in tournaments? Depends on volume, right? What does big money mean? Are you happy making $500 an hour playing cash games with a lot of variance? A lot of people are. A lot of people aren't, right? You have to put in a lot of volume. Volume cures your variance problems. Cash games are great for grinding up a bankroll consistently. It's very important to grind up your bankroll consistently. And you do that by playing games that have relatively low variance. Tournaments have huge variance, and that's why you see people, quote unquote, getting rich. What's a good bankroll to just start? Go to jonathanlittlepoker.com slash bankroll. Bruce Lee says he played a small family-owned casino. Probably doesn't meet my criteria. Yeah, I would not keep my money in a small family-owned casino. That does not seem wise. Um, I mean, I, I really would only keep my money at exactly Harris or MGM. And that's probably about it. Maybe when. Does the increase in short net game mean players are getting sick of holding? Listen, I think there's a big increase in short net games on TV among people who play poker all the time, that does not mean people are getting sick of Hold'em. And I do not think Short Deck is going to take over the world at all. Just like people thought PLO would take over the world, it has not. People thought Mixed Games would take over the world, it has not. No Limit Hold'em is a game that's easy to learn and also is, um, it's easy to get into, right? If you say this game is like this other game, but then you take out all the cards and the hand rankings change and you can make it straight using using numbers that don't even connect. I mean, like, you just start making things difficult. And when you make things difficult, people don't start at the bottom, and that makes it hard for people to ever get to the top. How do you play against people who make huge bets, like 10x or 12x? Just play good hands. That's easy. Whenever people make gigantic bets, it's really easy to play against them. It's easy, easy, easy to play whenever people make mistakes. Haven't been watching poker on TV. No. Believe it or not, I don't have time to sit around and watch poker on TV. I do have a guy who takes, he watches all the poker on TV for me, takes the hand histories, makes them into a nice, easy text format, and sends me the text of all the hands that he thinks are relevant. He's a good poker player. He already knows what are relevant hands. Anything that he thinks is neat or interesting, he sends it to me. And even then, like one out of 10 hands I think is neat, the rest of the hands are not. So I pay someone a small amount of money to watch the poker for me. He probably would have watched it anyway. Get the hands, send me the hands, I look at the hands, and then use that for my own study. But it's very, very slow to watch poker on TV. That's a big problem with poker on TV is that you get to watch, what, 10 or 15 hands an hour, and then most of them are not actually that interesting. I was watching a well-known poker show the other day on TV, and I fast-forwarded through literally every hand. I was like, what are we doing? Excuse me, I'm in the middle of a show right now. Oh, hey, Thomas. Hey, Thomas. Thomas has a bib now. Thomas has a bib because Thomas drools. We're going to call him drooly from now on. Let's see. How do you play? Oh, so we already answered that. Is it a good idea to play satellites? No. Only a good idea to play satellites if you like gambling. Whenever you play satellites, you're one in, let's say, 10 to cash a satellite. Then you're one in, what, eight to cash the main, main events? So you're one in 80 to get any sort of cash? So if you're one in 80 to get any sort of cash... Think about the variance. And then you're only like 1 in 800 to get a real cash. So of 1 in 800 satellites you play, you're going to come out with a lot of money. If you play, what, 100 satellites a year because you're a pro satellite player, it'll take you 8 years to get a real cash. On average. Of course, you could be lucky. You could be unlucky. Maybe you're better. Maybe you're like great at poker. Then maybe you're 1 in 400 to get a real cash. 1 in 400 is not a whole lot. All right. Well, this stream is basically over. We've been here for an hour. We talked about American sites. Use them to get experience. Do not use them to try to play for a living unless you're willing to have them take whatever you have in there. So if you are going to become a pro, only keep a few buy-ins in there and go from there. Do not think that your money is safe or well-protected. Don't get lazy. Remember whenever poker stars closed, so many people got lazy. And they had their money locked up. I remember when 
Um, full tilt, absolute clothes, etc. A lot of people were lazy. They had all their money on there. It got locked up. I was lucky. Right before full tilt closed, I had $320,000 in there from a score I just had. I took second place in a big $1,000 tournament. And um, I cashed it all out. Why did I cash it out? I'm not going to say I knew full tilt was, was uh, shady or anything, but... I don't know. Something told me to cash out. Maybe because I had that experience in the past with Poker Stars and Party Poker where a lot of people's money was locked up for a while. And I knew I didn't want that to even be a potential thing that happened. So we cashed out. We've seen this story before. A lot of you have not seen this story, but fortunately for all of you, you know someone who's seen this story before. And they have wisdom to give you. I'm not an old man, but I'm wise in this instance because I've seen it happen again and again. So even though you personally have not seen it happen... Understand, this has happened again and again. Don't be shocked whenever it happens. Thoughts on players with a very high red lines and losing blue lines. How do you fix it? Well, it's not necessarily a problem, right? If you're winning, that's great. Um, quite often in small stakes games, your blue line will be through the roof and your red line will be down because you're winning all the big showdowns. In the high stakes games, quite often your red line will be up and your blue line will be down because you are stealing lots of small pots. You'll find that quite often that is a pretty good strategy. So don't think that both lines need to be up. They don't need to be up. Super helpful satellite math there. Yeah, I mean, Amanda, look, a lot of people think the goal is to satellite into a big tournament and get rich quick, but it's not. The goal at the end of the day, if you want to succeed long term, is to find a game you can beat, play it consistently. Ideally, it has low variance, and satellites have infinite variance. Um, I mean, sure, you can play satellites and then play them like... Um, like a tournament, like if you're playing it for cash, if you just cash out all the satellites for the same amount. Like say you play $100 games and you win $1,000 and you cash out the 1000 and never play the 1000 that's probably fine. The other problem with satellites is that um, quite often if you're good at satellites, you're not going to be so good at main tournaments because in major events, you're trying to get in the top 1%, whereas in satellites, you're trying to get in the top 10%. And that's a very different strategy. So that's it. <clears throat> We're gonna go now. Oh no, I hear Mr. James crying. Mr. James is crying. Mr. Thomas is sleepy. So we're gonna go. Fooly, I'm not sure what you're asking. We'll talk about that later though. Everybody have a great day. Everybody have fun. Everybody be nice. Thank you all for being here. And we will see you again on Wednesday, bright and early, 9 a.m. Eastern time. If you miss any of the recordings of A Little Coffee, you can find them on youtube.com slash float the turn go there click like click subscribe it supports babies like mr thomas if you enjoy this share it with your friends i think i'll make a full video about this topic because um, this is a topic that seems to give a lot of people problems understand please understand that dealing with this topic when dealing with this topic you are probably not an expert and if you are not an expert then you probably don't need to accept your own advice. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. Holla don't follow.